Welcome to the update 2.5 X-Way Strike dev server. I'm going to be covering some new ships and then some of the older ones that are getting damage model updates. First up, SMS Kaisa. It has a similar gun layout to Von Detan, however it also has the 12 inch or 305mm cannon such as Helgoland has. It still has the 3RPM figure too. This means that it can get 10 guns onto a single target in a broadside, however it has very restricted angles on the middle turrets, so normally you're only going to have 8 on a target unless you're fully flat onto them. The armor is also slightly better than Helgoland's, maxing out at 350mm, having pretty good coverage, and then having a 50-30mm to 30 millimeter belt inside. Overall this should be slightly better than Helgoland, you know, same shells, the shells getting added to both however it's a direct downgrade to the AP. Overall, just it's going to be an alright addition to Germany. It's going to be good. However, I wouldn't say that this is going to be the best dreadnought in the game. That comes later. It also comes after Von der Tan, so I would say that this is probably the objectively correct line to grind at the moment, as Kaisa is better than Helgoland, and Von der Tan is generally better than Westfalen. Up next is the USSR, who got a PR50 premium. I'll just be upfront with this one. It costs 8,000 golden eagles, don't buy it. You would be paying 8,000 golden eagles as much as you would for a premium tier 4 cruiser for a 4.0 vehicle that will get clubbed by reserve destroyers. Th this thing's price is baffling. Even if it was 3,000 golden eagles just like the Akabono, I still don't think I could recommend it. This just feels like a ripoff, a very very blatant ripoff. Just don't buy this at all. There is no reason to. Now, compared to the standard PR-50, the only difference is it gets two dual 25mm turrets and it gets two anti-submarine warfare rocket launcher racks. It's incredibly similar. The PR-50 itself isn't great. And while this thing is better, it's not 8,000 Golden Eagle better. There are many, many better things to spend your money on than this. Simply don't buy it. It's far too expensive. Now, if the price is reduced to 3,000 gold eagles, I still don't think it would be particularly good, and it still wouldn't be very money efficient. However, it would at least be passable if you want to get up to the top Russian coastal ships. But at the current price, absolutely not. Up next is Great Britain, with yet another coastal ship, the Whitby class. So, it's a 4.3, so it's a directly worse battle class, effectively. It does have the Mark 20 Bitter Torpedo, as was being expected, which, as I showed earlier, only has a 37 km per hour top speed, 11 km travel distance, and 89 kg of explosive filler. This is an incredibly weak torpedo. It is debatably one of the worst in the game. So really, these aren't going to be particularly useful. And none of these launchers can traverse, including the rear one with two torpedoes. It can't, just like the forward ones. The main gun is alright, however it's at a battle rating where, you know, there's another ship with two of these turrets in the front that you can get in probably one one thousandth of the time, which would be, you know, Battle Class D-37. So really, I simply cannot recommend this ship at all. It comes after Peacock, which I guess makes enough sense. It doesn't really excel at anything as far as I can tell. It has very slow and weak torpedoes, it has very low firepower for its battle rating, pretty low anti-air for its battle rating, it has a low top speed, it's easy to kill, it has no notable armor. But this thing just feels like a strange addition. It really should be at battle rating 3.7, maybe 4.0 but that's pushing it. If it goes down to 3.7 I suppose I could recommend picking it up if you're interested in, you know, frigates, if you think it would be fun. But overall, it's not going to be a very noteworthy vehicle, and it's going to be quite weak. Next up is Japan, who got Isuzu. This is a Nagata class cruiser. However, it's in a late war refit where they swapped out all of the main cannons for a dual 127mm 40 caliber cannon. This isn't the same as the one on the destroyers, it's an anti air version. And it also has a lot of 25mm auto cannons. Now, the armor is still. You know, standard fare for a cruiser, which is going to make it quite survivable against destroyer weaponry. However, the guns are quite weak. Here are the stats for them. As you can tell, nothing particularly special. They also have HETF ammunition, as you would expect from an anti-air gun. 
However, they didn't actually get their ready racks. Now with the ready racks, these guns can fire at 14 RPM. Without it, they can fire at 8. However, in War Thunder, they're only going to have the 8 RPM figure, which means overall this ship is going to be rather weak. It's going to be quite survivable against destroyers. However, it's going to have lower damage output than most of them. So it might be good in a down tier. However, in a same tier or up tier match, it's going to not really be worth using. If you're running the 4.7 Japanese lineup, I wouldn't actually recommend swapping this in because Akatsuki, Keiko, and then Shimakaze is a much better overall lineup. Even Yugomo is debatably better than this ship. However, I will say if it gets its 14 RPM figure, I think it will be significantly better and it might actually have a role. However, it remains to be seen if it will get that on the live server. If it does, I'll probably review this thing quite early on as I think that might make it a fun ship. However, in its current state, not really worth getting, quite weak overall. Last up for new additions is Etna, which is an Italian cruiser, and it comes before Bartolomeo. It is also an anti-air focused cruiser that has less main firepower, but more anti-air weaponry. Compared to Attilio Regolo, this has three turrets instead of four. However, the 135mm cannon did receive a fire rate buff in this update. But it also has 10 65mm cannons and then 21 20mm cannons. Now the 65mm cannon has a fire rate of 30 rounds per minute, which is quite excellent, has a high velocity of 950 meters per second, and a time fuse shell stock. This should be quite the good anti-air cruiser. However, in anti-ship combat, it's not going to be particularly powerful. It has a low top speed, all right armor, but overall not amazing survivability, especially compared to something at the same battle rating like Trento. Overall, this ship seems okay. However, it doesn't really have a place in the Italian 4.7 lineup, as it is already three ships, and this is the weakest of them. It could potentially be used late into matches as an anti-air ship. However, I still think it's not particularly impressive in this role, as while it is good, you're sacrificing a lot of surface firepower for that. Overall, this thing is okay, but again, it's just an addition that doesn't change very much for the Italian tree. Really, they should have gotten a new Dreadnought, but they just didn't. So those are all of the new ships. However, lots of old ships also got updated, and those are certainly worth going over. First up is America. North Dakota received some new shells and now has stock HE with a 33.25 kilogram explosive shell. Not particularly good, kind of just, you know, average 12 inch HE. But it also got an APCBC shell. The shell is also not particularly good, however, it is better than the shell it used to have. It's an unlockable in tier one, and I would recommend getting it after, you know, tool set, fire protection, as usual. This should improve North Dakota a bit, however I would say it is still not competitive with most of the other dreadnoughts. Now, the more interesting change for America is to the armor of many ships. Lots of them got more anti-frag plating, and before you panic, anti-frag does seem to have also been nerfed in the dev server. Rather than completely stopping HE shells, it reduces their damage a bit, which is how it should function. The ships that got this are New Orleans, Baltimore with a full hull, Northampton, Atlanta with a full hole with some overlap, Portland, and Pensacola. Cleveland did not actually receive it despite being quite similar to Brooklyn. However, this should be a quite sizable buff to some of the weaker ships in the American tree like the 5.3 heavy cruisers. Next up comes Japan. Yuga is known to have had a broken armor scheme. Well, that has been fixed. It is significantly better now having better overall coverage, covering more of the internals better. However, notably, the internals also got changed. Now, all the shell rooms are on top. Not only that, shell rooms and magazines finally aren't swapped anymore. Now, shell rooms can still detonate. However, it seems like they're less damaging when they do. So this should be a massive, massive increase to its overall protection. Instead of being one of the easiest dreads to kill, Yuga should now be probably one of the stronger ones. However, it's difficult to tell if there are any holes that are being missed, as it will require a lot of playtesting for those to really come out. However, a much more notable change happened to Yuga, a much more concerning one. The HE shell was replaced with an SAP shell. 
the SAP shell has the same filler as the HE shell, so 68.64 kilograms of TNT. This is going to be an incredibly powerful shell. This may dethrone Maria as the most destructive dreadnought in the game. I think that Hyuga is going to be the best ship in the new update. Sure, it's not Kai'Sa, you know, the only new dreadnought. However, it may as well be a new ship with all of these changes. It is far better protected. It has much better ammunition and the most destructive shell in the game. The internals are better laid out, so it's harder to insta kill even if you can pen it. This ship is going to be far, far stronger than it was. It may as well be a whole new vessel. It is easily going to be the number one ship of the update for top tier. There is simply no proper contest for this th thing. However, next up, you know, it attacks to Maria. Of course, it's going to maintain a top position. It still has its incredibly powerful SAP. And then I would say that third place is a battle between Poltava and Kaisa. Really, it depends on if you value Fire Rate or the SAP, as Poltava is much weaker than Maria in overall, you know, protection, turret angles, responsiveness due to the turret facing backwards. However, I would say that those two are probably pretty evenly matched overall. Then, you know, rest of the German lineup comes next. And then it's kind of a fight between, you know, America's one kind of bad battleship and then Great Britain's three really bad capital ships. And then Italy is dead last because, well, they don't even have one, so they can't really be competitive. But overall, that's what the hierarchy is looking like for balance. Yuga is going to be much, much stronger than it was. It's going to be the best dreadnought in the game. It's going to be much scarier than it was before. I may re-review this one depending on if people want to see it covered again, because as I said, it is going to be like a whole new ship now. So yeah, that's the 2.5 X-Way Strike dev server. I'll be reviewing some of these ships once they're out. The order will likely be decided by a poll on my Patreon, and I will hopefully be able to make a video soon about all the damage model changes once I've been able to play them on live kind of see how they work for myself, get other people's opinions on it, see things I may have missed. And hopefully this update should correct a lot of the mistakes that are made in updates 2.1 and 2.3. There's still going to be issues with Dreadnoughts being overpowered, but so long as the damage models can be gotten under control, that should at least provide a jumping off point. Thank you for watching, and remember, don't buy this.